Hello internet users and welcome back to another video. Once again, I'm returning to the world of Pokemon to do something ridiculous and unnecessary. If you're familiar with Pokemon games, then you'll know that the series is notorious for having quite a few glitches and design oversights. And for some time now, I've been making videos showing how you can use some of these to completely ruin a save file. With the right setup, a player can get stuck almost anywhere, sometimes requiring several real-life hours, weeks, or even months to make the game playable again. For today's video, I'll be showing all of you another one of these absurd situations. However, this time, the setup might not go exactly how you'd expect. Without ruining the surprise, we're going to jump right into it, and I'll walk all of you through the steps on how this is done. The first and most important thing to keep in mind is that everything in this video will be performed on a Japanese copy of Pokemon Ruby. You'll also be able to do this on the Japanese Sapphire as well, but keep in mind that this will not work on any version of Pokemon Emerald. For the first step, we're going to start a new game and play it normally up until a certain point. Once the player earns the Balance Badge from Norman, they will then be given the HM for Surf. With this, we can head to Mauville City and start preparing for the real fun. For the second step, from another game, we're now going to trade over and give this character a full party of level 100 Shiny Gyarados. I understand this is going to look really random, but bear with me, all of this will make sense later on. Most of you probably can't read what their moves are, but every one of them only has damaging attacks, and no status moves. They also all know Surf, which we will be needing them to use shortly. Once we have the Gyarados, we're now going to visit the bike shop and get the Acro Bike. This is the item that will let us break the game wide open. Next, we're going to take the town's eastern exit and use Surf to reach one of the largest routes in the game. There are a lot of trainers here, and we need to defeat all of them along the way until we reach Fortree City. After healing up our team, we're going to turn back the way we came, going backwards until we reach this section right here. We'll now open up the inventory and throw away whatever remaining items we have, leaving us with nothing. There will be a few key items there, but at this point in the game, it won't be anything usable, so don't worry about any of those. However, outside of the bag, all six of the Gyarados will be holding Leftovers, an item that passively heals you during battles. If you're familiar with my videos, then you might expect that we need to get rid of all of our money too, but that doesn't matter for this particular setup. As you'll see in a moment, there won't be any possible way to buy items anymore. And finally, for the next step, we're going to do something that only works in the Japanese Ruby and Sapphire versions. Start riding the Acro Bike and stand exactly one tile away from the water's edge, facing either left or right. Something that is unique to the Acro Bike is that you can press a direction on the D-pad and B at the same time to make your character hop from side to side. In a casual playthrough, this is virtually useless and is only ever used to pick up a few optional items here and there. However, in the original Japanese release, this hopping animation has a very unfortunate oversight that the devs missed. When you are hopping, there is a very tiny window where the game incorrectly thinks your character is facing the direction that you're moving towards. This means that if we were to hop up towards the water and press A at just the right moment, the game will ask us if we want to surf on the water, even though we're not actually facing it. Under these circumstances, if we say yes, the game will activate surf and we will begin swimming on land. Obviously, this is not intended to ever be possible, and this glitch was later removed in all international releases of Ruby and Sapphire. Now with all of that said, you might be wondering, what exactly are we going to use this glitch for? As you can see, we can almost freely move around the land tiles, how exactly is this supposed to softlock us? To find out, we're next going to move to the north, going through the rest of the route, until we return to Fortree City. This is also why we previously made sure to defeat all trainers along the way. We don't want them bothering us as we move around in this glitchy state. Once we've made it back to Fortree, we're going to go down over here and get ourselves on this bridge just south of the Pokemon Gym. As it turns out, the elevated bridge tiles interact with surfing in a weird way. If you were to press up on this area right here, your character will jump off their Pokemon as if they reached land normally. By doing this, we've now reached the Fortree Gym without ever obtaining the Devon Scope. 
The invisible Kecleon is still blocking the entrance, and we have no way of getting past it. And in addition to that, there is no way to activate the glitch anymore. Without any more water tiles, there is no method of glitch surfing to get back to the bridge, or anywhere else in this area. And although Gyarados may be a flying type, it can't actually learn the move fly, so there's no way to escape with that either. We are now trapped with nowhere to go, except inside the gym. However, we're not quite done with the setup yet. To truly make this save file diabolical, we're next going to defeat all normal trainers inside the building, making sure that none of the Gyarados take any damage, leaving them all at full HP. With the gym leader Winona left as the last trainer, we're now going to go outside and save the game, getting as far away from her as we possibly can. With this, we have now just created one of the most evil save files in Pokemon history. As I've just said, there is no normal way of leaving the area. The Devon Scope is obtained just past Fortree, and we have no way to go and get it anymore. The only thing we can do is go back into the gym and battle Winona. That should be easy though, right? After all, our party is full of level 100 Pokemon that can KO hers in one hit each. However, defeating her wouldn't do anything. We'd still be trapped here after the battle concludes. Which means, the only way to escape would be to lose to her on purpose instead, causing our character to warp to the last used Pokemon Center. I think you can all see where I'm going with this. This is where things start to get interesting. Sure, we could just defeat Winona, save the game, and leave it truly softlocked forever. However, by leaving in this small window of opportunity, we can make this situation a lot more sinister and amusing than it really should be. Let's say we handed this save file to someone and told them to escape it as fast as humanly possible. This is how it would go. First, they'd go into the options menu, change the text speed to the fastest setting, and turn off battle animations. Next, upon loading the save, they would open up the party and waste more time removing all the leftovers from the Gyarados. And because the game was saved outside, they have to spend an extra minute going through the gym puzzle to reach Winona again. As we just went over, winning the battle is out of the question. The only way to escape the lock is to lose intentionally. To make this happen, we're going to have to play the battle in a very specific way. As stated earlier, we have six Gyarados in our party, and all of them only know damaging attack moves with base 100 accuracy. And at level 100, all of them are absolutely guaranteed to KO Winona's Pokemon if a move lands. This means that in order for us to lose, we have to slowly pass turns and let Winona knock out all of the Gyarados. However, under these circumstances, the only way for us to go through a turn without attacking is to go into the party menu and switch one Gyarados with another. And when I say this is the only way, I do mean that. I often get lots of comments telling me that you can just skip turns by selecting the run option in a trainer battle. But no, that's not how it works. It will still be your turn until you make a real selection. It should also be noted that while we're trapped in this location, there is no way to deposit any of the Gyarados into boxes. You have to enter and lose Winona's battle with all six of them in your party. But looking at the footage, you might have realized a few things that make the switching strategy really obnoxious. Even though we've turned off the battle animations, every time a shiny Gyarados comes into battle, its sparkle animation will still play. This means that every switch has an extra split second added onto it, which of course, adds up over time. On top of that, recall that Gyarados has the ability Intimidate, so when it comes into the battle, the game will waste more time by lowering the opponent's attack stat. This can only happen so many times per Pokemon, but it's yet another small thing that makes it all take even longer. In Pokemon Ruby, Winona has four Pokemon that she uses, Swellow, Pelipper, Skarmory, and Altaria. Even if you don't factor Intimidate into anything, they're all pretty weak compared to the six level 100s. None of them have moves that can poison us, and in general, all they can do is waste all of their move PP. When this happens, the game will force them to use Struggle and give them recoil damage in the process. Because most of our team possesses many status moves, we will often have to wait for them to use Struggle before they can significantly damage the Gyarados. As I'm sure you can imagine though, this process takes a very, very long time. However, there is also one major exception to keep in mind. 
Her first Pokemon, Swellow, knows the move Endeavor, which makes an opponent's HP equal to the user's. As you can see, this lowers a Gyarados's HP by a good amount and is essential to losing the battle. Endeavor only has 5 PP and is pretty much used at random. Unless at least 3 Gyarados switch into and get hit by this, it will be impossible to lose the battle. Believe me, I've tested this with Endeavor hitting 2 of them, and the Gyarados's combined HP was still high enough to survive all of Winona's Pokemon struggling until they faint. Once the Swellow has used up all of its Endeavors, the rest of the battle is just tedious menuing. We must sit there and switch over and over and over, until eventually, Winona manages to knock out five of the six Gyarados. Notice that I have switched the Gyarados in a way where the last one sent out only has enough HP to survive one hit. With the last Gyarados sent out, we're now left to the mercy of RNG. For the last turn, we can no longer switch and are forced to make an attack. As you'll recall, the Gyarados we're using are traded Pokémon, which means that they have a chance that they could disobey. At level 100 with 5 badges in our possession, the chances of this occurring aren't exactly consistent, which is why we depended on switching so much for this battle. As you can also see, most of the Gyarados were paralyzed by Altaria's Dragon Breath too. But now that we're down to the last turn, with no other choice but to attack, the final step to escape is just to hope that Gyarados disobeys or gets paralyzed this turn. If it attacks, then we win the battle, and we'll have no choice but to reset and try everything again from the beginning. But if it disobeys or gets stunned, then Winona can finish us off with struggle, finally causing us to lose. And that final turn is what truly makes the save file so evil. After experimenting with this setup multiple times, it took me a little over two hours each time to get down to the final Gyarados this way, and once it's sent out, it's pretty much a coin flip whether or not you win or lose the whole thing. On my first successful escape, the final time was 2 hours, 10 minutes, and 17 seconds. Over 2 hours of tedious switching and watching her team slowly waste all of their moves until they can do more damage with Struggle. At the time of making this video, the top speedrun times for beating Ruby and Sapphire are just under 2 hours. So needless to say, if someone were to start a new game, it's pretty reasonable to say that they could reach Fortree before this battle even ends. This one battle goes on for so long that it's actually faster and far less luck dependent to just start the game over. This isn't like other soft locks I've done where you can just mash the button for a long time until you're finally out. In this, it needs your full attention to make sure you're properly switching around the Gyarados to even have a chance to escape at the end. If you get distracted for a second and accidentally mash into an attack input, you might KO one of her Pokémon, making the rest of the battle impossible to lose. As I said before, losing will teleport you to the last used Pokémon Center. This puts you outside of the trap and allows you to continue playing normally. If you wanted to, at this point you could head over to Steven and obtain the Devon Scope, and remove that Kecleon forever. This will prevent anyone from ever doing the same setup on the game again. But by now, I think you guys get the point. This setup traps you in a gym and forces you to play Pokémon in the most boring way possible to escape. And with that said, that about does it for this video. If you want to see something similar to this, then check out my Vaporeon softlock video. This one also makes use of a very obscure glitch to break the game in an amusing way. Or if you want to see me stream, you can check out my Twitch channel, or go to my VOD channel to watch past streams, for games like Pokemon Blaze Black. My name is Pekaspri, and thanks for watching.